Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about dwarf planets. We're going to try to add all of them into one single object and create something a little bit more, more massive and larger than what you see on the screen. But we're also going to compare them to other objects in our solar system and find out how big these things are. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So right now, as soon as I let go of the pause button, you'll see a lot of these objects colliding into one and there's going to be a lot of explosions. We're going to start with this. But basically, the purpose of this video is to investigate the total mass and the total size, I guess, of an object you could create if you were to combine all of the dwarf planets into one. Now, five of the objects you saw were the official dwarf planets and five others were the less official ones that most scientists today believe are dwarf planets, but they haven't really been assigned that title just yet. So we've just created this large Pluto-like object that has a lot of fragments flying around. And so let's actually do this again. I'm going to place them one by one, explaining to you what they are as well. Starting with, uh, I guess, the most famous one, the object known as Pluto. So here is Pluto, we're going to actually pause the button and we also are going to go into simulation here and disable the gravity for now because we don't want them colliding. I also want to make sure that the fragments are not created and that the collisions here don't produce any heat. So here is Pluto. The next object um, is also quite well known. Um, it's an object known as Ceres. It's a little bit smaller than Pluto. As a matter of fact, it's one of the smallest dwarf planets out there. Um, and this object is located in the uh, asteroid belt very close to Mars, in between Mars and Jupiter. So this is the object that we're currently investigating with one of the pro probes known as the uh, Dawn probe. We're also are going to place the interestingly shaped object called Haumea, although in this simulation it's actually not correctly represented. It's supposed to be really, really flat. It spins really fast. Uh, we are also placing Makemake, and that's the object right here. And lastly, the uh, more distant object known as Eris. So here is Eris. So these are the official five dwarf planets. Let's now place the unofficial ones uh, recognized by a lot of scientists. So let's start with um, the most famous object of, of them all, Sedna. As of today, this is actually the farthest object we've discovered. It has a ridiculously high um, orbital radius and its single orbit takes it about 11,500 years to complete. Uh, so most people, most scientists today think that this is also probably a dwarf planet. We're also placing Orcus, which is what's known as a Plutino. Basically, it's an object that has a really, really similar orbit to Pluto, uh, just slightly farther away from it, but it orbits in a very similar fashion as Pluto. Uh, there's going to be another object here known as Quawar, and all of these objects, or most of these objects, I've actually talked about previously in separate videos, and this is the one with the, with the strangest name. Uh, so this is Quawar. Uh, there's another named object known as Salacia, and this is what Salisho is going to look like. Uh, these objects here, except for Sedna, they're actually relatively close. Uh, they're at a distance of, of about 40 to 42 astronomical units. Sedna is at a distance of close to about 520 astronomical units, which is dramatically different. Uh, we're now going to place two objects that don't actually have proper names yet. One is called 2002 MS4. And um, this is what's known as a Kubiwano. Uh, Kubiwano are objects that are actually in the same region of space as Pluto, but they, they don't have a Pluto-like orbit. So they have their own sort of orbit that is relatively circular and at a distance of about 40 to 42 astronomical units. And the last object here is going to be 2007. OR10. Uh, the number in front obviously means the date when it was discovered. And uh, 2007 OR10 is the only object here that is located in what's known as a scatter disk. It's a region of space that's uh, past Neptune um, and it has quite a lot of objects similar to this, but 
um, this is probably the biggest one in this region at a distance of about 67 AU from, from us. The single orbit for this object takes about 550 years. So these are the 10 objects we're going to be combining, but before we combine them, first of all, let's actually slow down time a little bit. Um, let's compare it to some of the more well-known objects, starting with our own moon. So in comparison to things that you might know, uh, these are not really big. And this is actually one of the reasons why you can't really, or it would be very difficult for us to call them planets. They're significantly smaller. Our moon, the one that you see in the skies every night, is larger than every single one of them. And when it comes to other moons, like for example, Titan, they're even bigger than that. Ganymede is practically as big as all of them together. Um, you can also compare it to planets. And here, obviously, Mars basically swallows all of them, and Earth is dramatically larger. So these objects are really tiny in comparison to a lot of other objects in our solar system. But let's actually combine them and let's see how big of a thing we get. So we're going to go back into the simulation options and let's re-enable gravity. So hopefully they collide very gently with each other without causing too many fragmentations and create one large mega-sized blob of stuff, mostly ice. This is actually mostly water ice. And here we go. So let's give it some time to cool down and to basically get a little bit larger because its density needs to readjust a little bit. For the most part, as you'll see here, if we go to materials, it's going to um, have the composition. Okay, this is actually strange. It's supposed to be mostly water. So we do need to change this to about this. There we go. Its density should be about 2.2 grams per centimeter cube. And I think it's actually stabilized around that value because for the most part, this object is mostly going to be water. Now, slightly different water than the one on Earth because it's been exposed to uh, outer space for so long and basically bombarded by the sun, but still water. Oh, actually it decreased a little bit. Now, in terms of size and mass, um, so this Pluto is about 4.9 times 10 to the power of 22 kilograms, which is, I think, about uh, one one hundredth or maybe one divided by 120 masses of Earth. So it's basically really, really, really insignificant. But it is comparable to our own moon. And if we were to place the moon here, uh, the mass of the moon is going to be I guess just a little bit higher than the mass of this Pluto, which really represents all of the dwarf planets together. So let's rename it as the dwarf planets. Uh, now, what's e what is interesting about the difference between our moon and um, this object is that their composition is going to be very, very different. For the most part, our moon is silicates. It's basically rock. It has some water. It has some iron in it. It has some metals and stuff, but for the most part, the moon is basically almost entirely made out of silicates. This, however, is going to be practically almost entirely made out of water. There's going to be some rocks on the inside, most likely almost no metal whatsoever, almost no iron. And uh, this is why the density is so low. It's about um, three to four times lower than the moon. And even though the size is the same, mass is significantly uh, less as well. Now, this obviously doesn't represent all of the dwarf planets we might have in the next few years as we classify more and more objects as dwarf planets, but it does represent a relative majority of the bigger dwarf planets we've discovered so far, and it's very unlikely that we're going to discover anything bigger than Pluto at this point, uh, unless it's in a completely different inclination that we haven't really looked at before. So it's most likely that if you were to add all of the dwarf planets we even discover in the future, from our solar system, and if you were to add them into one single object, this is what you would get. You would get an object that's about 1,842 kilometers in radius, um, about one one hundredth mass of Earth, I guess slightly less than that actually. In terms of moons, at least, it's about 66% mass of moon, and um, it's going to be, for the most part, just water. So a pretty good source of water, but other than that, it's actually not very interesting. One more thing I wanted to take a look at here is the surface gravity. And the gravity here is about 10 times smaller than the gravity on Earth. 
So basically here you can jump about 10 times higher than you would on Earth. Now before we finish this video, let's actually do one more thing. Let's place Earth next to this object. Also enable fragmentation again and let's see what will happen if all of these dwarf planets collide with our planet Earth. Now, something like this may have happened a long time ago, uh, especially during the early creation of the solar system. Um, there's a period of time known as the late heavy bombardment during which we ex we actually saw a lot of collisions. Well, we didn't see them, but the, there were a lot of collisions that happened. And we still have record of some of them, even on our planet Earth, from some of the craters we discovered. But this is something that may have happened at least once or twice to our planet. And one of these collisions even may have been responsible for creating the moon. So this is kind of what would happen to our planet if all of the dwarf planets basically collided with our planet Earth. And there you go, a complete destruction of pretty much all life on the surface of planet Earth. And that's kind of all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to show you what would happen if you were to add all of the dwarf planets into one and collide them with planet Earth. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys learning through video games and wants to learn more about space and sciences, and consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, Bye-bye.